Hey guys, if you have previously configured a jacket on your TrueNAS system, like we talk about in this video over here, you might be getting an error message from some of your indexers saying that a challenge has been detected, but Flare Solver is not configured, which looks a little bit like this. But why are you getting this error message, and how do you fix it? Let's take a look. What's probably happened is the indexer you're trying to query has set up a service called Cloudflare. Now, I'm not going to go too in-depth into reverse proxies or what Cloudflare does, but from the indexer's point of view, it's probably reducing a lot of the robotic traffic and only letting verified humans onto the website. If you think about it from the website's point of view, it's not making any real revenue when a robot queries it versus when a human has actual eyeballs on the website and might click on some of the ads. So it's motivated to make sure that you're actually clicking into the website itself instead of just sending a robot to do the clicking for you. The problem is Jacket is a robot and it's doing the clicking for you. That's the whole point of Jacket. But Flare Solver is also a robot of sorts. So how is it getting past the Cloudflare protection when other services can't? Well, the answer to that is it can only get past some verification. Cloudflare actually uses a bunch of information about your browser to understand whether or not it thinks you're a human or it thinks you're a robot pretending to be a human. So what Flare Solver does is it opens up a virtual browser and tries to pass some of those checks. A lot of the time it will succeed, but it will still struggle with some other types of verification. If it's prompted with a CAPTCHA, for example, those kind of odd squiggly letters that you have to tick a box to verify that you're human or select images from a series of boxes, it's probably going to fail. Cloudflare doesn't always prompt you with a CAPTCHA, but when it does, Flare Solver doesn't actually have a way to get around it because it's a robot and CAPTCHAs are designed to prevent robots from getting any further. Cloudflare doesn't always prompt you with a CAPTCHA though, so Flare Solver does a pretty good job of allowing most queries to go through, or at least certainly more than Jacket allows by itself, which is zero. So how do we set up Flare Solver? Well, the easiest way to do it is to use the predefined Docker container, and that's what we're going to do here. We're going to install the Docker container on my Raspberry Pi, which I've previously installed Docker on. You can check that video out over here. So final word of warning here, I actually had lots of problems trying to get Flare Solver to run on the version of PyOS I was running, which was Buster, but a new version Bullseye was released at the end of 2021. If you're having some problems, I'd recommend trying the Bullseye release. The right way to do that would be to do a fresh installation of the new OS on your SD card and reinstall everything. But if you'd like to check out my video on doing it the lazy and probably wrong way, you can check that out over there. Once we've logged into our Raspberry Pi or whatever machine we are running Docker on, we should first verify that Docker is in fact running. So we can do that by running docker-v, which should return the version of Docker if it is in fact running. We can see a success message here. I'm running 20.10.12 build E91ED57. So I know that Docker is successfully running on my Raspberry Pi. The best place to get the latest image of Flare Solver is from the Docker Hub, and when we visit the Flare Solver page, we can see the Docker pull command on the right hand side. So we're just going to go ahead and copy that command and then paste it into our Raspberry Pi interface here. It will take a minute to pull the latest image from the Hub and install it on the Raspberry Pi. Once the image is downloaded, we need to figure out how to interact with it or run it. And usually for any sort of Docker container, the Docker hub itself will contain some sort of instruction. And if we scroll down here on the Docker hub page, we can see that is indeed the case. There are some instructions here about installation after we've installed the image. We're not using Docker Compose, so I'm just going to take a quick look at the Docker CLI command down here, which is docker run hyphen D, and then it specifies some options for the container. Now the details will vary a little bit depending on the application that you're putting into Docker, but for the Flare Solver app, this command is setting a few variables that I'm completely comfortable with. The first is it's just specifying that Flare Solver itself should be running. It's also specifying the port, which is 8191, that Flare Solver will be available on. It's specifying the logging level to be at an informational logging level instead of a verbose logging level. And then finally, it's specifying 
specifying that it should try and restart the image in case of failure. So it will keep trying to get the image back up and running again if it's detected that it's stopped. I'm pretty comfortable with it doing all of that, so I'm just going to copy the docker cli command, switch back over to the Raspberry Pi, and paste it in and run it here. Now that we've run the installation, the app should start by itself. But how do we check if it's running? Well, we can use the docker ps command. That will return all applications that are currently running. If we want to see all applications regardless of their state, we can use docker ps a. So we'll just go ahead here and run the docker ps command because I'm only interested in running containers. We can see that the container that's returned is Flare Solver and it's got a status of up for the last three minutes, which should mean it's running successfully and everything is good. Now that that's configured, the last step is to configure Jacket itself to use Flare Solver when a Cloudflare challenge has been detected. Once we log into Jacket, we can see that one of my indexers is indeed failing its tests. It's got this little warning triangle here. And when you hover over it, you can see the Flare Solver is not configured error message. If I hit test, it will indeed return an error message that again, Flare Solver is not configured. If we scroll down, we can see that there is an option in Jacket to configure the Flare Solver API URL. And in this box, we can go ahead and put a HTTP address of the machine that we've installed Flare Solver on. So for me, that's 192.168.0.12. It'll be slightly different for you, probably. And then we also want to specify the port that the Flare Solver service is listening on. So that's 8191 here. After we've placed that in, we can scroll back up a little bit and hit this blue apply server settings button and it will take a second, but those settings will then be applied in Jacket. Once the changes have been saved, we can go back up to our problematic indexer and run the test again and we'll hopefully get a success message instead of the usual error. Now, unfortunately, the very nature of being prompted here with the verification and having to attempt to solve it is going to massively increase the amount of time it takes for the indexer to resolve. That's kind of the nature of the beast here. Cloudflare is prompting us for a verification. We have to solve it and it's artificially delaying us here. That's not a dig on Flare Solver, which is a really fantastic application helping to solve this problem but it is kind of the nature of the game here. You can see it took a little bit of time for the indexer to return a success message. I have had it go up to three, four, and five minutes. If you are having problems with it resolving, you can go ahead and extend the max timeout down here to whatever value you're comfortable with. You can see I've made it quite generous to allow the maximum time possible to solve the challenge. That's it guys, that's how you can configure Flare Solver on your Raspberry Pi and hopefully that will solve some of your problems with your indexers. At this stage, if I could get you guys to do the YouTube dance, which is to leave a like on the video, possibly a comment on the video, and most importantly, subscribe, then you will get notified about future content and we can all learn a little bit something. Otherwise, I will catch you guys on the flip side.